I'm Lee Spencer with the Racing Boys, and I caught up with Ernie Irvin. Ernie, we were down in Pebble Beach and had a little time to go through Salinas and see where you grew up. Can you imagine from your earliest days there to where you are now? I guess you turned 60 this year. A lot of things have happened from the time that you were a kid growing up in Northern California. Yeah, it really has. And, um, you know, obviously I, I raced at Watsonville, which is just down the street from Salinas. And then I also race at Stockton, in, in Stockton and then um, Madera. I raced all those racetracks, and those that's how I kind of cut my teeth and tried to figure out um, a little bit of um, racing. And my dad was um, racing on the dirt track all the time, and I was racing pavement tracks. And so, um, I mean, growing up in Salinas, um, obviously there's not a, that is not a real big racing city, but obviously Laguna Seca Raceway is just down the street. And uh, it was very enjoyable growing up there and um, being able to someday get back to the East Coast. How much time did you spend on Laguna Seca? Because if I recall, you are you were pretty stout when it came to road course racing. I actually ran Laguna Seca one time um, and didn't run good at all. And then, and then, I, then I ran DK Allrich's car um, on the road courses when I went to the East Coast. And I wasn't good at all. And Tony Glover told me, he says, you haven't sat in anything that's good. You're going to be just fine. And I mean, I, I mean, my wife can tell you. I mean, I'm like, there ain't no way I'm gonna know how to road race. And our first race here, uh, I, mean, I got black flag, and come to the, from the back to the front, and it was it was easy. I'm like, huh, this is road course racing's easy. How much of it then is driver, and how much is equipment? It's it's like, I mean. You have to have a really good piece under you, and you also have to be, you know, really drive properly and being able to, you know, capitalize on everything on that racetrack. I remember your days with Glove in the Kodak car, and then, of course, you had a phenomenal run in, in the 28 with, with Robert Yates racing. When you think about your cup career, what are your warmest memories? Um... You know, obviously winning the Daytona 500 was awesome, but but winning my first race at Bristol, um, just had never run very good at Bristol, decent, and um, been able to win my first race there. Um, that was that was pretty awesome. I mean, and then probably the thing that brings back the most memory is running at North Wilkesboro with an eye patch on. So that brings back a lot of memories. What was that like? Because drivers need everything every tool that they have in the it, toolbox to work with and I think of your peripheral vision and everything else uh, how difficult of a task was that you know it, it really wasn't any more difficult than normal um it just didn't seem like it because I mean and that was my first race back um and so being able to to get over all the injuries and then also being able to, you know, drive an eye patch on, which I thank NASCAR for ever letting me do that. And then, but just being able to go out there and I mean, I, I, it's all so much memory. So much, it's like, I remember racing at North Wilkesboro. I remember this and it's like, okay. And I remember it in traffic. It's, it's like, okay, well, I still judge the distance between the car and sometimes you hit them and sometimes you don't, you know? And sometimes I always tell Schrader, I said, Trader, I outrun you with one eye. <laughs> I, I bet he appreciates that. Um, so, Trader's still out there running, getting it done, you know, doing Kenny Wallace still out there racing. Do you miss it at all? I mean, I miss it. Um, I just can't do it. I, mean, I got a go kart and I'm, I'm racing it. I raced it one time and I'm too slow. Um, so, I'm, I'm decent, but I'm not very fast, and it's a road course. I mean, I should be able to be all right on it, and, you know, my kid weighs a lot less than me, but he outruns me by four seconds. So, you know, I'm just I'm trying to get better at it, and, and you know, and, and obviously that could be my racing. You know, I mean, I, I mean I'm 60 years old, and, you know, being able to get back in the stock car is just not going to happen. So 
I just I, I like to watch my kid and and Jared Jared's a really talented race car driver and just being able to watch him advance. Talk about Jared and, and how much contribution you've put into getting his program off the ground. Well, I mean, you know, obviously me and his mom have funded everything, basically, um, and just trying to get him more experience. Um, but it's the, the problem is, is he's way more talented than we can give him for the experience because we can only race him so many times. And, you know, he if he went out every week, I, mean, I don't know how good he'd be. Um, and then obviously we struggle because we really don't have a team. We kind of get get people every once in a while and to help. And so it's it's not like we go racing against people that race super late models all the time. And we go out there and it's like, okay, well, Manny and Mo and Jack, and, and I'm one of the guys. And it's like, you know, and then normally we have a crew chief. And a crew chief has to do almost everything. And so... We haven't really gave him the right opportunity, but we can do we do what we can. So I guess the fans would want to know, since you stopped racing full time, what's your life been like? What have you been doing? What have you? How long you and Kim have kind of enjoyed your golden year? Um, it's it's been do whatever my wife tells me to do, and most of the time it's something to do at the farm, something to do. This is broke, that's broke. So I'm, you know, basically, I'm a fix-it man, and I'm not a very good fix-it man. Um, just, just everyday life, just, um, just doing everyday. I, I, when I wake up every morning, I've got something to do. You know, it's not like I got to say, you know, I don't have nothing to do today. Um, I don't know a day like that. Um, you know, some days you just don't really do much, but it's not like I didn't have nothing to do. So, um, it's just, you know, the reason I retired originally is basically because I wanted to watch my kids grow up and I wanted to be there for my wife. Can't ask for anything better than that. You're going to be at Sonoma this week. Pretty much what, you know, what's your game plan? What will you be doing at the racetrack? Whatever they tell me. I, I just do this like I do with my wife. I mean, I, you know, they paid our way out here and, and they just wanted to celebrate 50 years at Sonoma and, and I was a big part of it. So I, mean, I feel very honored to, to come out here and I mean, just do a bunch of stuff for the racetrack. When you think about where you began, because I, I think, you know, it's been pretty well chronicled about, you know, building stands or whatever, you know, little bits and pieces that you took in your career to get established initially to where you are now. You, you could say you've had a pretty incredible life. I'm, I mean, I have. I mean, because I got paid doing what I love to do. And very few people get that opportunity. And I mean, I would have raced, I mean, me and me and Dale Earnhardt talked about, it's like when I was getting ready to start driving the 28 car, they they said, well, what what kind of salary do you need? need? And so, I mean, I, I went and asked my buddy Earnhardt, I said, hey, so what kind of salary should I ask for? And he goes, do you love racing? I said, yep. He said, would you do it for free if you, that's the only way you could do it? I said, yep. He said, I would too, but do not tell Richard Childress that. So, um, I mean, again, and just, you know, obviously, I mean, I, I told Robert Yates, I said, well, I mean, if if so, I mean, pay me what you paid Davey. I, I mean, I don't know. You know, we were kind of on the same level, and, you know, and Robert said, okay, paid him this, and I went, Oh, yeah, that's way more than I was making before, <laughs> but I didn't tell him that. <laughs> so you're just kind of happy to take the money and run. Yeah, I mean, and, and you know, I mean, I had a great career. Um, I, was, I mean, there's there's a couple races that I obviously I would have loved to have won. Indy was one of them. I run second one time, and then the first time when Jeff Gordon ended up winning, um, I mean, I cut a tire down about ten, to, seven or eight to go. And was was driving off from him. So that's the one racetrack. If somebody said, "Hey, run Indy for me," I'd have to really say, "No, I can't do it." You know. But I mean, that's the that's the one race that because I remember the first test we ever had at Indy. I thought it was really exciting, and you know, it's just I mean, the, the racetrack is not good for stock cars. 
He's not really good for stock cars. And it just, they don't put a very good show on or nothing. It's all about being at Indy, being able to do that. But you can call yourself a Daytona 500 winner. Yep, I was fortunate enough to do that. Uh, I was fortunate enough to be on the, on the right path to win a championship. It never happened because I got hurt. But you and your lovely wife, Kim, have really enjoyed yourself, and we really appreciate you coming on. We hope you have a lot of fun at Sonoma, and hope to see you down the road. Yeah, never know. Thanks, Ernie. Okay, thanks.